change management is a very critical thing. So we've seen it in the survey. It pops up in the survey and saying this is a critical part of these projects. This example is a billion dollar medical products manufacturing. They were implementing Oracle ERP. They had a large staff implementing the system, but ran into a lot of problems when they went live. There was a $30 million impact on the business that was publicized. So there was a really significant issue there. We talked to some of the people that actually were in that project and said, well, what really happened there? This was not an altered project. This is a project that was done a number of years ago. Having talked to some of the people, there was a real lack of testing and training so that when the rubber hit the road and you try to implement the system, everything went crazy. And all of that was the result of top management support or the lack of. Top management had become aware of some of these issues, but didn't do anything about it. Said, no, no, let's just do limited testing and limited training. We want to go live. Let's get done. And then, bam, you hit the wall and everything went crazy. Another situation, again, is change management. This is a little bit more on a positive side. So here's a half a billion dollar electronics manufacturer that was doing a re-implementation of of Inform. And the key to this implementation, the key to the success for this particular project was that they decided to put a change management leader into every single location. So they had an overall leader of change management, but then they, each location had their change manager. And they had weekly and monthly meetings to address change, not only status of the project, but also how we're going to deal with change. Top management was in attendance for all of these meetings. So there was a very effective communication and training and readiness. And all of this drove the business towards a successful implementation. Andrew? I'm sure by now everyone's sensing a theme here. We're hammering on the change management right out of the gate. From my perspective and my experience implementing ERPs with with many clients and and different solutions and clients of different sizes, it's something that we have seen and continue to see is often overlooked. I think there's a perception in the marketplace that change management is kind of this ethereal, touchy-feely coffee and donuts and balloons and newsletters. And while certainly communication and outreach is a component of it, there are times where change management skills can be brought in to really pinpoint what's going wrong in a project and to dig into it. And I just wanted to share a brief story that with a little more specifics around what happened that I hope maybe can add a little insight to how change management can be applied. And in this case, even mid project to try to get things back on track. In this specific example, we ultra were were called into a project that had started running into serious resistance. They were getting into their testing cycles. They were receiving poor support, poor participation. So if you can imagine your first test cycles are maybe with a very smaller group. And as those test cycles proceed, you're expanding the audience of participants. Participating, right? You're getting deeper and deeper into the organization and your processes being tested are expanding. And they were getting just a, a tremendous amount of pushback out of their warehousing, primarily their warehousing and materials group. So they asked us to come in and provide some change management support, try to get to the bottom of what was actually going on. And ultimately, what we had uncovered in this situation was there was a specific, we'll call them a resistor, naysayer of the project that was basically taking the negative side of the change and water cooler talk, hallway talk, parking lot after work talk, right? But they were really bringing down the project and they were focusing on just the negative aspects of change. Naturally, change is scary. We struggle with it and it can be a little painful, but they were focusing, like I said, just on the bad side. So when we found out where the resistance was coming from and who was doing it, of course, there's conversations with the individual that's spreading the negativity. But what we wanted to do was to step into the audience that had been impacted and help them understand the rationale. So we're not just making this change to make your life miserable. We're doing it for specific reasons. We deployed some what we call one-point learnings. So as we started to uncover exactly what their concerns were, what are the changes they're worried about, what's their perception of that change, and how do we address it? An example of what we were working on with that client was there was a lot of perception in the warehousing and dock staff that the system was going to, quote-unquote, make our job harder, right? It's going to slow us down. It's going to make us inefficient. We're not going to be as good at what we do. It's going to be a real pain. And what we found out in just one example through the exercise, there was a big concern around specifically the receiving group. And it was true. We were going to change processes and require them to capture more data in the receipt cycle. Hence, their concerns that it would slow them down. So what we tried to help them understand is we were making that change because they were getting 30, 40, 50 phone calls a day from the sales group wanting quality metrics on different lots. So it was very specific what we were trying to achieve. So we helped them understand. We put up very simple slides. What's the change? What's the impact? Why are we doing this? And the answer was simply, in this case, we wanted to free them from 
from answering the phone and running around and chasing down this, this information. And it was a game changer for them because they understood, yes, it's front loading some work for us. But if that is the cost of getting rid of, you know, constant pestering from sales for lot information, it was worth it. And again, it's a, it's a very specific example, but I think it's just a good description of one way that change management is a little more tangible and can really get in there and help the organization through the change. In this case, we had just an organization that was highly political. People were very tepid with how they communicated, and it was really impacting the way that the project team was addressing things, not just within itself, but across the organization. On top of that, they were aggravated by the fact that they had very aggressive project timelines, so they felt as though they couldn't really take a step back and try to get alignment. So what ended up happening was it was a lack of buy-in. We had people who believed in the future, and we had people who didn't believe in the future. And in some cases, their vision of what that future was was off. So again, it's an example where we rapidly tried tried to get in, deploy an OCM initiative, interview the organization, and, and really get to the root causes. Ultimately, in this specific case, a lot of the headache of the team ended up being as simple as task distribution. Everyone was confused. Everyone was getting their tasks assigned to them kind of differently. So we just simply worked the project management office, said, look, we, we need a standard approach to task assignment and weekly status reporting. So that everyone's very clear on exactly where they are. That helped reduce the stress level. It helped everyone stay on the same page. And while it maybe didn't fix their political environment, at least when everyone understood what page they were on, some of that communication was just simplified. Mm -hmm.